Hey everybody, hope every one of you are doing well and it's cold here, it's, it's cold uh, where I'm staying in South Africa it's cold you can see uh, I am wearing two jackets or so one jersey, one jacket it is cold but anyway today I'm going to try to repair a dead hard drive so this video is going to be repairing this dead hard drive uh, let me tell you guys in short what happened I recently actually three weeks back bought a new RTX 3080 graphics card so before I was using GTX 1070 I've got a second and RTX 3080 actually not a brand new one the price was right so I took it now to to use that with my old PSU that was a 750 watt but non rated uh, the GTX 1070 was all right with that with that PSU I never had problem but when I put RTX 3080 it was giving me blue screen every now and then so I decided to upgrade my PSU I got a 850 watt PSU uh, 80 plus gold rated so yeah since I changed it everything's working fine but while I was changing the PSU something I did something that I didn't know knew that I shouldn't have done I used my old PSU's entire cabling and I just replaced the new PSU and used those old cables that were already in the PC to connect my new PSU and this two PSU that I have power supply that I have both of them are totally from different company and only later on after I blown this hard drives and this SSD only then I realized or I found out in YouTube that I mustn't do that I should always use the cable that each individual power supply comes with do not mix and match with old PSU or other PSU's power cables or cables so anyway this is this is done this SSD I don't know if I can recover it have a look uh, there you go you guys can see in the camera the middle chip is blown there is a mark scratch mark that's the place where it blown and also on the side uh, I can see on on microscope that it's burned let me show you guys <clears throat> you guys can see now the blown portion that's the blown part and then here also you can see this explosion happened so basically what happened when I change or I use the wrong cables from the old power supply um, this is a 5 volt line I believe somewhere it's coming 5 volt line now this connectors I think this is the power connector the power connector carry 12 volt and 5 volt line both now the 12 volt should go to the 12 volt uh, section and the 5 volt should go to the 5 volt because I use the different cables different power supplies cable what happened what I understand that it was vice versa means the 5 volt went to the 12 volt rail and the 12 volt went to the 5 volt rail so <clears throat> that blows this 5 volt side where the 5 volt supposed to run because the voltage was simply too much more than double so that's all I understand or my research in YouTube made me understand this so anyway I'm not going to repair this 
but I need stuff from this hard drive see my my kids photos videos all are there all my old uh, YouTube videos that I made is also on there and some of the softwares that I use also there so basically if this hard drive dies it dies with a lot of important things that I really want them to be recovered so I'll, I did have a look but I'm going to open it up in front of you guys and then explain to you what happened it's exactly the same things happened with the, what happened to the ssd is exactly the same things i believe happened on this it's a four terabyte uh seagate barracuda hard drive so yeah it's the exact same things happened to this hard drive so let's get on it with it and see if i can get these things right right first things first let's open this hard drive uh, my screwdriver there you go let's open it up you need to use not normal bits x bit i believe they call it there is one two three four I must tell you guys I did open it previously so put it back just to make a video I should have shown you guys uh, that this is really dead uh, but I did check everything um, yeah uh, let me explain to you guys some things quickly you guys can see this part I did grind it using a grinding tool this grinding tool it's a grinding pen it grinds anyway um, I use I thought maybe when these things happened this tracks here they, they are also i believe 12 volt tracks uh they burned or something or five volt tracks doesn't matter i i'm not sure but i thought they because i see there was a burn mark so i open it up grind it and open it up and then i realized there is nothing is this track is all good you you guys can see in the microscope there's nothing wrong with this tracks both of them so basically this connector is co uh, is connected properly there's no problem with it now look what happens when i put a power supply on it uh yeah this will do i think if i put power on it you will see come on don't be like that I've got a small workspace so it's difficult for me to accommodate everything I have let me show you guys watch carefully the multimeter I've got 12 volt supply on that connector itself and after the 12 volt where I'm pointing now this is a 12 volt. you can see the track is big this is a big track so it I was suspecting or what I knew this should carry the 12 volt it's 1183 I don't know if you guys can see it nicely plastic thingy out there you go hopefully you can see now 
there is 11.83 volt so 12 volt is present now after that track comes there is a there is um this zero ohm resistor this two this two they are zero ohm means they are working or they are basically a fuse so if you check both when I check both sides they are still 1184 1184 1184 so this fuse or this zero ohm resistor is working now the problem that I have is on my 5 volt rail which I believe is this you can see 5.12 volt now that tracks goes let me show you guys this one is the 5 volt track it comes here this too small it's really small really really small I don't even know if I can remove them because this they are very small when you check on this side 5.3 both of them 5.3 they are carrying that but when you go on the other side that's zero now let me remove the power power supply and then you I will show you guys when we check how we check a fuse or a zero ohm uh, resistor how do we check normally what happens the good ones zero ohm resistor means uh, it's you need to check on uh, beeping mode or what you call continued mode the good ones should have a beeping noise see both of them has a beeping noise means there is no resistance on that resistor it's straight basically a wire and now if the zero ohm resistor is good there must be a continuity so the multimeter should beep or if you check it on diode mode it should show you a reading of zero ohm. zero ohm. so they are good now what I find on my previous inspection that this too when I put it on beeping mode here I think camera will I, I hope my microphone picks it up there's 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 no beep there's no beep so means that path is broken that that track is broken here see so I I, I don't know very well but I think uh, this <coughs> hard drive is not giving getting 5 volt from the 5 volt track so that's the reason why the computer doesn't uh, what do you call doesn't um, recognize the drive or I can't hear any spinning or anything when I put the power supply on it uh, let's double check it on uh, diode mode there is a reading of 0 0.02 I believe ohm see anyway I will try to remove that those two and I've got an old board and then I found there is one resistor here I think is this one this one is good one I need two of them and then there should be one more somewhere yeah this one the other one they are not zero ohm resistor there is no continuity so yeah I want to replace that dead ones with this two 
Uh, before we go to, to remove this and replace it, them, let me show you. They are they are zero ohm resistor. That time I couldn't show you guys. You can see on my microscope window now it's triple zero. So normally zero ohm resistor are like that. I, it can be a single zero or triple zero or double doesn't matter. Um, they are zero ohm resistor. And the one that I'm going to replace with or two is this one. This is the first one. And that's the second one. So let's remove all four of them and then see if this hard drive can work again. Let's put some flux. I'm not going to remove it with hot air station. I'm not good at it. I have not enough experience. So I will rather use, um, put some shouldering iron, what you call it, shouldering, put some shouldering, let me put some, I am not very good with the hot air station because I don't have enough practice. So let me, re let me remove it, try to remove it in other way.
not very best job some can do but I think that will do but let's check if the line works now Now I'm going to connect the power supply and see if there is any voltage is coming or not. I hope I don't burn anything. It did burn, it did burn, it did burn, it did burn. It did burn. He did burn. He did burn. So it means there is a short somewhere in the boat. When I plug the power supply in, uh, both of them just burn it out with the smoke. So I have a short somewhere. Uh, let's move on to finding if there is a short on this board. How are we gonna do that? The only way I can do that using a power supply and or a short detector. I have a short detector machine that I can push voltage on it, small one, and see if anything gets um, hot. I hope it's not a capacitor or something. <clears throat> Hi, I'm back again. Uh, okay. This is the second half of the video of fixing this dead hard drive. Uh, I did a few weeks back, uh, I tried to repair this board of this hard drive. Guys, it didn't work. Um, it really didn't work. Let me show you guys. There is a fuse that I changed or zero ohm resistor I changed. There's two, there's two register I changed, it did not go well, there is a short in the board so that when I plug the power in, that short make those zero ohm register burn, those fuse burnt. So, uh, then I realized rather not wasting time on the board to repair, I ordered in eBay a similar board, let me show you guys, similar board. This is the old one with the model number written there. You can see the number 5595 revision D. I get the same board for 5595 revision D. Now, <clears throat> it took about 14 or 12 days from, from someone to send me to eBay. Uh, eBay's order actually uh, from China to South Africa it, it's around 14 15 days I think but I did receive the good it's not brand new it's a refab or refabrished they just uh, serviced it and cleaned it and they sold it in eBay as a second hand or refab or recon uh, hard drive kit anyway let me explain I did put this one before I made the video or try to make the video. I put it on the hard drive and uh, 
the hard drive spins now with this old board the hard drive was not spinning but the new board allow my my this device is, is a hard drive, external hard drive uh, enclosure or reader so when I plug it with this new board in the hard drive and then I put it there the hard drive spins like crazy crazy spins uh, it's like it confused it can't uh, decide what to do or what whatsoever so it spins for two three seconds the first time and after that it, get, it goes silent it, there is no movement on the the hard drive or anything whatsoever and meanwhile the computer cannot detect this hard drive so means simple board swap didn't help me to recover this hard drive uh, like I told you guys this hard drive has lots of photos this is my personal hard drive lots of photos of my kids of my family and lots of softwares and some games uh, stuff that I really love to get it back and actually I want this drive to work because it's a 4 terabyte hard drive and current situation financially it's not that good it's no brainer for me to spend money on buying a new hard drive uh, so what I, I I learned on YouTube and online research that when that happens simple board swap doesn't work then we need to get the similar board and the old uh, old damaged board has this are all these hard drives as a BIOS chip on it and um, after a long research I do learn on this board I will show you guys this is uh, look in the microscope window this chip is the BIOS chip for this motherboard or the circ uh, this uh, circuit board and this one is the new ones it's the same same place and it's I believe it's probably similar type of BIOS chip so what I learned from um, Northridge fixes video that uh, his name is Northridge fixes fixes uh, owner or, or the guy who does the channel his name is Alex so Alex explain simple board swap will not work if it doesn't work then swap the original uh, BIOS of this uh, hard drive swap it to the new board and hopefully that will solve that no detect issue so i'm going to try to remove and put it swap this old bios to the new board and see i just hope uh, when this accident happens or the mistake happens by me i just hope this bios chip did the old one the bios chip did not burn or get shorted or something hopefully it did not do that because uh, that the protection fuse or the fuse was blown on that board so finger cross that this chip is still all right i'm going to simply remove it and replace it on the new one and see from there if we can get this hard drive make this hard drive alive okay simple removal of the bios chip This is the old one that I was scrapping or cutting the place thinking there was a short of, I mean, break of circuit. Or I thought those line was were, were, were burnt, but it didn't. Let's remove the chip.
one more thing remember guys the this chip is pin oriented means the not pin one must be in the right place you can see the mark here it's, 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 it's the mark for the number one pin and on the board there is a tiny dot shows where the pin number one must be as you guys can also see on the old one on the old one it does shows as I did not change there is a tiny dot on the top corner of the chip you guys probably can't see but yeah there it is there is a tiny dot that's the pin one I forgot to put the flux some people do it without flux when they remove a chip or something but I still don't have the experience to do that Okay. the thing is I can do this two ways I can use my soldering iron or soldering iron to do it manually or I can use the hot air station so I'll try with the hot air station first but I am not very confident with it. let's try first There you go, looks alright. I will just retouch with my soldering iron to make sure everything is soldered properly. But it looks good to me.
okay it is done I'm going to clean it up and then let's see after fitting if it works okay I did clean the board uh, let's put the board together and see if this hard drive is working or not okay. if it doesn't work then I'll just call it a day uh, it's probably no use spending on it longer than that Okay, I'm gonna plug this to my um, this device over here uh, if this repair is right then my PC should pick up the drive let's 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 try it let's try finger crossed there is a noise came that it is been detected. You can see guys F drive F it did detect but I cannot see any infos zero white zero white zero white zero white so I don't know should I try to remove it and maybe try on the other drive or should I restart the computer What I will do, I will I will put my computer off and it might be this device is not, uh, it should be good, it should be good. I just want to try to connect it straight to the, um, to the, to the motherboard on the computer and see if it works. But one more thing I noticed, it's not spinning. It's not spinning. Okay, guys, the reason why it did not detect, I believe, uh, what I understand, come have a look. This job I did, it was a very, very bad job. Let me zoom it for you guys. Mm. guys probably will understand very easily don't shake don't shake stable if I have money I will get a proper stand the stand that I made is not proper it's shaky always look the pin number one uh, Let me try 
the other probe. You guys can see the pin is not connected, they are moving. So this three pin is not connected properly with the board board. So I'm going to reflow it with the hot air station. My, my soldering job was very bad. Uh, so yeah. <clears throat> Let's try it again. I can do this I will use my soldering iron and retouch them just to be happy come on bros Okay, I did retouch with my soldering iron. Uh, they looks all pina attached. Let me clean it and put back the board on the hard drive. Then I will get back to you guys. All right, it's cleaned up. Let's put it back together. Just to show you guys. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes. Okay, the board is assembled let's hope for the best and I hope I fixed it uh, 
I sound fan spin is spinning but still no detect from the drive I mean computer it is spinning it is spinning nothing And no, uh, did I put the BIOS right? Let's double check. Yes, I did put it in the right place. All the pins are connected correctly. Uh, yeah. Only thing I can check if my computer picks it up. It seems like the repair was a fail um, still I'm gonna pause the video hopefully some people will watch uh, hopefully I think the hard drive internal has a problem or got damage when the accident happened that's my only conclusion because the board is same I did replace the BIOS chip so it doesn't make sense in my head or I don't have enough knowledge about it let's try one more time the hard drive is just skipping skipping it's making tick 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 noise the partition magic also probably not gonna detect One disc two. Nope. Nothing. Nada. So guys, this is a failed attempt to recover this drive. I could not. I mean, I could not recover the drive. I will just have to say. I will see you guys in the next video. Okay. Thank you for your time. To watch a failed repair attempt goodbye